tweet about this. This is my Twitter uh, handle. And of course, the tax wheel options, Agile India 2019, and business agility, which is a tag for today. We prefer not to just talk about us when we talk about uh, just how good we are and everything. We're standing on the shoulders of a lot of people. So, first of all, uh, Chris, Matt, and Olaf Mason, they invented uh, real options. Real options. Wow. And we talk about uh, Steve Freeman, who uh, gave us some ideas on, on some tweets about, about real options. Below, we have uh, Kun van Exem, who's a Belgian guy, where we are from, uh, who, talked, uh, who invented dimensional planning, what we'll talk about as well. Nash, who's there, there who gave us, oh, sorry, Hegen, that's a Hegen. Uh, Nashu gave us some things about India that we're going to talk later on. Uh, Jürgen, who's there, Jürgen Desmet, who co-created this presentation with me some 10 years ago. Uh, if I have the opportunity to bring back, who, who works with XP? Who knows a little bit about XP? So a few people. If we have time to bring back uh, XP, I take the opportunity. So Ken Beck is there. Uh, below, George Dinwiddie, who brought some, some things there. Uh, that we'll talk about as well, who give a, a very strange commercial. Uh, and then on top, Keke, Hayata. Prince. So we have an opportunity, we'll talk briefly about Prince. Inge Gorgon, who brought us the Real Options Mantra that we'll bring. Uh, then below, we have Anat Ahmed, who gave us an interesting uh, picture that we're going to use. Uh, where are we? Brian Marek, uh, if you know him, the most famous quote we'll use today. Woody, I'm not sure if he's in the room, he's somewhere here today, who gave us some interesting tweets that we'll talk about. Same thing with Hitter, who improved our, uh, our slides, working on a book, an audio version of a book with uh, Vasco, uh, who gave us in the preparation a lot of ideas. Had he had My mother. She brought some ideas, as you can see, we'll talk about some of these things. Liz Keok, if you ever uh, meet her, she's one of the people who, if she understands an idea, she asks much more questions and she's able to explain it way better than the people who actually invented these things. So I learned a lot about real options from her. Okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, the, go oh, to my the goal from this presentation is to inspire you. Yeah, so... Um, the, we are not going to give you solutions to certain problem. We want to inspire you so that you can have ideas uh, and that you can solve your own problems. Uh, we're doing this by storytelling from us life, not from my uh, that work life. But uh, but you shall be smart enough to translate that to your own life. Correctly. We're going to start out with the real options mantra. Um, that means that we're not going to explain immediately everything that we'll talk about. We'll just learn you the mantra and then later on in the presentation we'll, uh, we'll teach you what they mean. So Heke, here you go. Options have value. Options expire. Never commit early unless you know why. This going to re repeat so the goal is that you also help out her with the mantra. So please help out and, and shout out together with her. One, two, three. Options have value. Options expire. Never commit early. Unless you know why. Was that okay? Or can uh, they do better? They can do better. Okay, let's try. <laughs> One, two, three. Options have value. Options expire. Never commit early unless you know why. Is that okay? That's okay. That's okay. okay. Yeah, this is any. That in the mantra there was commitment and there was option. What's the difference? Great question. I pointed that back to, uh, to Twitter and this was Gitta's answer. For her, an option is something you can choose and a commitment is something you promise to do. When I understand it, is commitment is to the goal and option is how to reach the goal. That's exactly correct. And if you just look at the pictures, yeah, the, the goal was up there and options are all the multiple ways how you can get this. This is why we took that picture. Dad, what if you, what if you have too many options? 
Right. So some, some time ago, I, I did a DJ set with, with your brother. And what a lot of DJs have is all these knobs and all these different options. And typically, what people like to do is use all these options. We want to lose all these things. Yeah? And we have an interesting story from Prince about that. When Prince created Wend of Scry, he made it, but he was not happy with the song. Uh, he was editing, uh, he was at, uh, mm -hmm. was at something by the song, but. Okay, so he had a hard time because he's keep, he played all the instruments, yeah? and he wants to keep adding stuff to it, but he wasn't happy. And he realized at some point that adding something was not helping him. And he made the song better by removing the bass line, yeah? which is something that was never done before in the industry. Yeah? And that, for him, that made that song perfect, removing something instead of adding something. A lot of people have a hard time doing that because of... FOMO, what means fear of missing out. Yeah, so a lot of people have, have problems doing that. And so we're going to ask you this question, for who... Is, is it, it easy? Yeah, sorry. For who is it easy to say no? Let's do a show of hands. For who is it easy to say no? Huh? Yeah. Not that many people, which is typically what we expect. We have about the same thing in Europe. Some people say it's harder in India. It's not true. In, in Europe, they have the same problem. Yeah? And uh, Woody had an interesting quote about that uh, that actually came from Peter Senge. Oana mentioned Peter Senge yesterday as well. Is that 90% of the time, what passes for commitment is really compliance. People having a hard time saying no, and we think that they say yes. We think that they're committed, but actually they're, they're just compliant with it. Um, and this is making a hard time, because if you're not able to say no, sorry to say, but your yes means nothing. Yeah? Because you keep saying yes, and if you say yes all the time to me, I don't know if you will do it or not do it. And that's a very hard time. So, to help you with that, what we're going to do might feel strange, but we're going to ask you and help you say no. So, let's try this together with Kerke. Three, two, one, no. no. That's kind of harder. Okay, maybe stand up. Let's try standing up, maybe because that you'll have much more energy trying to do this. Okay, do my. Three, two, one, no. no. Ah, a lot better. better, a lot better. Thank you. Okay. That you give them all theory. And theory, I found that boring. This, let's give them an example. Right. So let's talk about something that is much less boring. Uh, and let's talk about school, right? Okay. So imagine on Monday you need to go back to school. What are the options for you to go back to school? I can go back feet. I can go with bicycle. I can go with a bus. We have the, the great thing that we have a bus station right in front of our house, so that actually, actually the opportunity go to go by bus. Go with car. This is a car created by Scrum, if people didn't, don't know. This is uh, created in a workshop uh, at Agile DC 2013, so using Scrum for creating a car in, in one week. Unfortunately, this also brings us to a, a more negative Advertisement is that one of the people who's on the picture, Manoy, is at this moment in need of a spare kidney. So we're looking in the, op in the community if somebody has a top type O blood who wants to, to, to have a spare kidney to help them out. It's a, a long shot, but we're going to try it out. Okay, let's go back to the presentations. We said we were going to explain some of these things. So we know that options have value. Now. Creating what is value uh, to, uh, on Thursday, no, on Friday, I think, uh, Roy, uh, Ray Errol has a, has a session about value. There was a session this morning, I think, about value as well. Because how do you define value? It's really, really hard. Some people say, no, it's easy. I can, I can tell you what value is. We know from no estimates that it's already hard, or for a lot of people, it's hard to estimate just how the stories are, but the value part is even harder. If you think it's easy, just think about what's the value of kissing your significant other or getting kissed. It's really hard. Could you say, could you put an amount of money in it or something else? Uh, it, it's really hard to, to value. Still, the goal is, or the, the idea is now to ask Kek, okay, what's the value of the different options? What is the value of going by feet? Uh, 
when the weather is nice, it's nice to go by feet. When okay, when so what's the value of to go by, by bike? I can go alone, but I can go also with my friends, and it's pretty fast. Okay, so what's the value of going with the bus? Uh, when the weather, when it's rain, raining, I can uh, go with the bus and I'm dry when I arrive. Right. Okay, what's the value of going by car? It's really fast and I can take a lot of stuff with me. Yeah, so this brings all the value, so that should really give us an idea on how you want to go, to give you all the information to decide on how to go on Monday, right? So let's, uh, how would you want to go on Monday? That is, you said never commit too early. Right, that was one of the things in, in the mantra, we should not forget. Why don't you want to commit now? It can be raining, I can have a huge jet lag and all that stuff. Yeah, so there's too much information that we don't know yet, so you need not much more information. So what can you do? Only decide when to decide. So that is the thing. So we need to look there for when does an option expire. So let's look there. When is the option to go by feet expire? Uh, 6.20. Yeah, so the goal is to arrive at school at around 8. So that means she has to leave 1 hour 40 minutes earlier. So that's 6.20 to, to leave. When is it expiring to go by, by uh, bicycle? 7.35. So that's a different timing. Uh, to get there. When is the bus leaving? Uh, 7.3. Yeah, so the bus is right in front of us, so let's say re re leave the house at, at about 7, something like that. And then by car, when is the expiration there? Uh, 7.40. Yeah, it takes about 10 to 18 minutes, depending on how you look at it. There is, of course, with uh, a, um, a car, another expiration, if, if me and my wife, we both have to work early, we might have left already and then that's expired, but let's just look at the normal situations there. So, let's look at, we put everything on a timeline, the expiration timeline. So, if you just look at it, you can see, okay, it's 6.40 feet, six, uh, 7.03, let's say 7, uh, bus, the bike we see, we see the car uh, at 7.40 and then school starts at 8. Now, you also see, you, like you said, you see 7.40, it was set somewhere between 10 and 18 minutes. Some people say, oh, but then it should be 7.50, because that's the real expiration. These are the people who always come late, because they take the minimum time. Yeah? We try to take it a little bit longer, then there is some extra option, and maybe she's a little bit early, but that's, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Dad, it's not the expiration timeline, but the decision timeline. Yeah, so it's not really about the expiration, it's about taking the decision. Imagine that it's 7.10. What are the options that you can still decide on? I can go with bike and I can go with car. This is why it's so important to think about the expiration timeline and to put everything in a, in a moment but because then it helps you to, to think about these things. It really helps to make these decisions. But what we really want to do is also how to avoid to, to commit too early. Let's look at ways how to uh, not commit too early. One. Postpone commitment. This is a very old picture of me and my partner in the very first year we were together. Uh, we didn't want to get married because we thought it was way too early to be committed that much and say in, into the marriage because we didn't know each other well enough. Yeah? Still, we were thinking like, hey, we like each other and we think it's serious, so we took some fake wedding pictures that we send off to family and friends yeah? as a kind of in-between. Two. Two, collect information. While we were in the relationship, we have the time to collect information to know each other, yeah? to get to know when, how, when things are going bad, what is this person doing? Is he stopping in the middle of a problem or is he continuing? Is he fighting with me and how are people fighting? Because that's really important information about relationship. Yeah? How do we deal with each other in, in times of troubles? That is what we do with collect information, to learn about the options. Three, choose sure options, easiest to change. So instead of buying a house or getting married, we decided let's go on a holiday together because that's a very easy option to change. If it doesn't work out after the holiday, we can just say we separated again and there's not much fussle to do, except for the emotional part, of course, but the rest of it is much easier to deal with. The, another way is then I was already living on my own, so you could just join me uh, and, and not buying a house or doing all that uh, paper stuff and so So these are two things that are options that are very easy to change. 
in software, we typically put a layer in between that helps us to decide what database connection, for example. Things like that. Four, invest in an approach that allows change to be easier. Right. So this is not about uh, the relationship. This is, I was really interested in having a walking desk at home. And I was building, I was planning to build a house, a new house, where we, I wanted to have that walking desk in the ground so that you didn't trip over it. And then I realized at some point that was really a big design up front because I was thinking, redesigning my home office, how to do that, and I never ever had a walking desk. I had even no idea if I actually would like to do that. I just had the idea, I read it somewhere, I saw some videos, and I thought it was cool, but I never done it. The day I realized that I came home and I told my partner, like, look, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to invest into a treadmill, into a desk that can go up and down to see if I actually like it. Turns out, I do. So six million steps later, that's exactly what I have in my new home office, which is a, a very big investment, but it's at the moment that I already know that it's working for me. Yeah? So that, and, and before, I, 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 did, I invested just a lot less money to see if it, if it was working. Staff liquidity. Yeah, there was uh, already a few people this morning talked about um, about moving people and, and stuff like that. So staff liquidity is a really important part of, of real options. Now, yeah, sorry. Who is an expert? Let's you do a show of hands. Who thinks he's an expert in what he's, he or she is doing? You can say it. Oh, not that many people dare to say they're an expert. I, I probably think you're way too modest, but okay, that's, that's possible. Now, conventional wisdom says experts, they get expert jobs and they need to do the, the, the expert job, right? This is something you probably see a lot. The experts are really doing that job. Problem with that is that these experts are very quickly stuck in that because they, these are the people that only do this. And very quickly in a team, you have a team of all experts. This is the database expert, this is the UX person, this is the test person, this is that, this, this, that. We have all these experts. Yeah? And that is really a problem. People are, are stuck. Doug Norton, he, he's, he already left uh, today, but he, he talked about this this morning as well, that it's really a, a hard part. People are stuck there and they cannot move. What staff liquidity says is that let's give the juniors the expert jobs and let's give the experts the time to help all these people. And let's help them. Because if we have juniors, people who are less good at a certain job, yeah, and we put, put them into these positions, these experts have the time to help them out. And if it's really, really hard, the hardest part of it, they'll jump in and they'll, they'll add and maybe do it. But for the easier thing of the expert job, these juniors can do it pretty well, which is nice for the experts because it's less boring for them because these, the easiest things of the expert thing is really boring for these experts. And it's nice for the juniors because they improve. Now, if you want to do that, what Chris said is that, oh, yeah, sorry, before, and what the result is, of course, that these people are much moving much more quickly, thus the term uh, staff liquidity, more liquid. If you want to do that, what Chris said is you need to have a scoring. You need to ask the people, not management, ask the people themselves to score themselves. And uh, this is his, his list, so zero means? I can, uh, I know nothing. One means? I can run it. Two means? I can tweak it or box fix it. Three means? I can redesign or refactor it. I own it. This is, of course, a typical uh, software thing. And we translated that to this presentation. So we said, OK, let's score ourselves for how we do. I'm doing this for, for, for a living, lots of presentations, so I score myself a three, an expert on this. Keke, she started doing her very first presentation at three and a half, so for already eight years, she's doing some presentations. Um, so she still scores herself a two. She's not at my level, but she still scores herself a two. Fun. As you can see, I'm really funny. Just, I give myself a three. Yeah, and that's, that's my dad. I said enough. I give them a zero. Real options. I've been talking about it for about 10 years, so I consider myself an up expert. I mean, like we say, we so show you some examples how we do these things at home. So Keke learned a lot about that, and we explained even more about the theory that's behind. So she scored herself a one. English. My dad is not a native, native? native 
speaker, this, I give them a two, but he's, he's really good in English, I found. Um, I, have, I have never had English at school, but I can talk with you, you can talk with me. So I give myself a one. She learned everything from YouTube. Very educational. Uh, staff liquidity, it means, there was a question this morning in Doc's uh, session about uh, productivity. And for me, staff liquidity, it actually increases productivity. Now, we took this picture, uh, I can, it's hard for me to, to show it from here, but if you, if you look at, at, at races like this, if this is a time race with a, with a group, what they're doing, if you look at it on television, is they're cycling all the time, and it's not the best one who's, on, who's the first. No, they're constantly changing the first person. That's exactly what staff liquidity wants you to do. It really wants you to change very quickly and have people, even the, the, the worst driver, they're still good. Yeah? But if, if you're in IT, probably a lot of you are already good, even if you don't call yourself experts. If you just change a lot, you will learn and you will actually help the team. Staff liquidity reduces risk. Yeah, um, I told you that I would show you a, a picture from Adnan Ahmed. Uh, that he puts on his blog about uh, truck factor or bus factor. Who is familiar with the term bus factor or truck factor? Uh, just a few people. This, the negative version and the positive version. The negative version is you get under a truck and then you're dead and then your team is in trouble because they lost the one expert who knows about a certain thing. I think the, I, I prefer to look at the bus factor uh, as a positive version in the sense that you can go on the bus and go on holiday, which is a much nicer view, but your team is still stuck. Because if you're the expert, you're gone. Either they call you on holiday. Some experts like it because it shows the family, hey, I'm important. But I'm pretty sure that the, the family doesn't like it that much. Um, but this is, um, if, if you're the only person who knows something, your team has a bus factor or a truck factor of one. If you have multiple people, it's much easier to go on holiday and, and, and even to die. Uh, because your team can continue to do it. It's net lies for you, but it's, it's, I actually had this on a team that a person ran into a tree. On top of all the personal issues that you have, we actually had to ask our customer for the last executable so that we can decompile, so that we can have the code, because he took his computer with him. Shit happens. Staff liquidity also increases trust at multiple levels. Yeah? Um, just. This is my son with me on stage, age 13. Just putting them there, giving trust, also increases trust and helps in multiple directions. And I can see that in also with just having um, yeah, juniors uh, helping out and doing it. You need an initial trust to, to put them there and to give them the stage and to let them do these things, but it increases trust in all directions. If you want to, this is a new slide here that I just had it because of the talk I said with Doc. If you want to experience some staff liquidity, we have a workshop on Friday on pair programming where we actually let people experience how it is to quickly rotate in a team. So you will, people will, you need a computer, people will actually work and develop software together, but you'll do that very quickly. And you will see firsthand or you'll experience firsthand how that goes. Yeah, thank you. Agile brings more options. Yeah, this is maybe not the best uh, picture to take that, but imagine that this is 50 meters and people had to jump 50 meters or 100 meters. You would think it's insane, and there's a lot, not much chance that you might survive. This is what they did at the waterfall, Niagara waterfalls and stuff like that. It's very dangerous. If people could jump just 50 times one meter, it's much safer. That's what we do with agility. We have every time one option. Naresh just talked about the project that he had 700, what was it, 700 experiments that failed? This is 700 small times. That's a lot less worse than failing just one time for the whole thing that we deliver. Yeah. So that brings much more options. Technical depth is a sold option. When I heard this tweet, from, or I heard Steve Freeman said that, I wasn't, I wasn't sure I understood it, because for me, I thought technical depth isn't not just an expired option, but he... He, he replied to me, he said, no, no, it's not expired because still people can call on it. It's not because it's technical depth that the code is no longer there. The option is still there. It slows you down and all these things, but it's not expired as it's, it's completely gone. You can still do something with that. Dimensional planning. 
I, I told you, this is an example on how you could do in practice some of these real options. We'll talk about how you can go in, a, in, in software. We'll, the example is not from software, but we'll talk later about that. Uh, so first way of going somewhere is the dirt road. The dirt road is not very handy, but you can go from A to B. Yeah, and typically it's not going to with a sports car, it's not scalable. Probably better to do on feet and on horses and stuff like that, but you can still get from A to B. The cobblestone road is a little bit better. You can go uh, from A to B also. Um, it's a nice way, but you don't have many lights or shops. Yeah, and you have crossroads, so it might still slow you down. The fastest way to go from A to B is course the highway you have lights you have four, uh, four lanes lanes from each each side um, yeah you have all these different kind of options you have exits you have uh, all these different kind of ways to get there so let's take a real life example and we thank Narish for that so imagine the old way to go from yeah Arungabad to Fatihabad in the old way, what we would build is just a highway. Now, now imagine that this is done and you come back and, and the client comes back and it turns out there is another Fatihabad. We built a highway from Arungabad to Fatihabad Hiriena, but there is also a Fatihabad in Madhya Pradesh. Damn, we built the wrong highway. So. The project manager comes back and he says, damn it, who's going to pay for this expensive mistake? Now, remember, this is the old way of thinking. What's the old way of thinking? To, do, to deal with that is create a tighter contract so the customer has to pay for it, right? This is your, that's, a, that's a very interesting thing to do because it turns out that this is... Can, can you read, Hege, can you read these, these uh, words? No, not very good. So let's, let's enhance this a little bit. This is the very small boat. What does it say? Original contract. The large boat. What does it say? Change order. Yeah, this is how these, these contracts were made. We sell to governments, to large things, and we have to sell them. We only get the contract if we sell it very cheap, right? This is how you get contracts. We sell them very cheap. And then we make sure there are some parts in the contract that say, if you're a mistake, if you don't or are not clear about what city to go to, or if you make another mistake, you'll pay and you'll pay a huge premium. So you pay for it. That kind of works if you're that project manager, but it typically works one time because afterwards they say, ah, we're not going to pay you for another board or whatever. So we prefer to work in a more uh, smarter way, which is in the dimensional planning. So we first start with... A dirt road from Arungabad to Fatahabad Hiriena. Right, so we, we said, the customer comes back and says, it's the wrong Fatihabad. Okay, so we built another dirt road for, from Urungabad to Fatihabad. Madhya. And so we come, the customer comes back and he says, It's again the wrong Fatihabad. Turns out there is a third one. I have no idea. I don't know India that well. So what do we do? We built another dirt road from Urungabad to Fatihabad, Uttar Pradesh. So what does our customer say? Hooray! He's happy. And what does his customer say immediately after he says hooray? Now I want a better road. Because of course you built a smaller feature and now they want the next thing. Right? So what do we do? We built the cobblestone road. We built the better version of it. Okay. So now there's two ways that the customer can react. The typical reaction is now I want a highway. So we built a highway. But there is, in that case, also another thing that happens very frequently. This is enough. We don't need the highway. What, what we've experienced is that um, when we have not just a smaller version, but a little bit more enhanced version, is that turns out that this company realizes, hey, we're not Twitter, we're not Facebook. We don't have millions of users connected all the time. We're, let's be dangerous in what I'm saying, we're just a bank and we only have 100,000 users a month, maybe 1,000 or 10,000 connected 
at the same time, but that's different than one million users. We thought, because we were a bank, we need a very scalable version. Turns out that this crossroad, uh, this uh, cobblestone road is good enough to solve all, uh, to sell and work for all our customers. We don't need much more. That happens a lot. Okay, so that's, that's ways of, of looking at that. Um, an interesting part to, to, look, to look at that is, of course, let's look at the cost. The cost of the old way. The old way. We paid for the wrong highway, and we paid sometimes from, again, the wrong highway in Madhya Pradesh, and we paid for the correct highway in Uttar Pradesh. So uh, we said this is a question mark, why? Because once we're into, into that uh, waterfall way of thinking, once we did it, deliver something wrong, we'll look very careful and make sure that we don't make that mistake again. We think we don't do it. We'll see later on if that's true or not, but we are not sure if we would pay twice for the wrong highway. Let's when look at dimensional planning costs. We paid for wrong dirt road in Haryana, the wrong dirt road in Madhya Pradesh, the correct dirt road in Uttar Pradesh, the correct cobblestone roads in Uttar Pradesh, and sometimes the correct highway in Uttar Pradesh. Yeah, um, depending if we need it or not. If you just count the numbers, if you're in finance and you just count one, two, three, it looks like the dimensional planning is way more expensive, but I think you agree that creating a wrong highway is way more expensive than creating some extra dirt roads. Yeah? That's the same thing for features. But if you just look at counting the numbers, it might look, hey, you, you delivered more and it's more expensive, but that's not the reality. But that's, not, that's just one side, that's the cost. Let's look at the value. Without dimensional planning, it will take a huge amount of time to deliver that, that highway. Because first the wrong highway, then the better highway, it takes a very long time to deliver that one. With dimensional planning, we very quickly have some return of investment. Don't forget, a dirt road still works. We don't have the scalable version, we don't have everything, but it could still work. I've delivered software where people would still put in everything manually. We had what we called an army of, of students, monkeys sometimes called, that would just put in some things. That was very expensive, but we were live with a feature like two years before our competitors, and we were selling stuff. Yeah? People were sending us faxes and, and stuff like that to, 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 to buy stuff from us that they couldn't find online. But we were selling already. We were getting money. Yeah? It was costing us money, but in the market they looked, wow, we're ready. So it was giving us a return of investment. We said we'll talk about later, but the full example, because... Uh, er, there is also a second Arungabad. We uh, built all the ways for, in M Maharashtra, but there is also one in Bihar of Bihar. So I said they would look very careful if they have the right Fatehabad, but they might forget that they need to check the starting city as well. So that is what is with features, if you look very carefully, let's now not make a mistake, you just look in that direction and you forget the other part. This is why it's still expensive. Okay, that's uh, a very, very nice story about uh, highways and stuff like that. How did we implement that? And what we want to talk, I give you an example of real options way of building a house. So, okay, okay. we had... A hundred years old house. So, did we like the house? We love Except? Many features are broken. So this is a very nice house, except electricity was a problem, water was a problem, heating was a problem. Actually, it broke down uh, before we, we, we had a solution there. So it, it started to become expensive, and it was kind of impossible or very expensive to change it. We, we were looking for 15 years of redesigning the house to make it better for, for our family. Turns out that our IDs grew faster than the money on our bank account, uh, so that didn't help. But it also had another feature. The old house has a huge garden. Which is nice, but that gave us another option also. It gave us the option to... Build a house in the garden. In the garden. As you uh, finally uh, look, you can see um, the old house. Yeah, so... We, we built the, 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 an extra house in the garden while still living in the old house. Yeah? You can think, oh, that's already a smart part, but this is just the beginning of the story. We were, while we were building the new house, like I said, 
the heating completely broke down. Now, this was October, November. It was already snowing, and we didn't have any heating anymore. I still remember on a holiday that she was eating with a jacket on and with, uh, with uh, things on just because it was freezing cold. Uh, so we needed to move to the new house as fast as possible. What we're going to show you is we're going to show you a list of features that, that might be needed or might not be needed. What I would like you to do is take one minute and think for yourself what are options that you think you would need before you would move to a new house. So this is the list of features. So think for, for one minute about what are the features that you need. We'll, we'll just ask questions in a minute. OK, who wants to sh shout out something that he or she needs? Electricity. I can write up electricity. Wait, wait. Let's give her the time to, to write it down. Yeah. Okay, the roof. I heard the roof, so let's write out the roof. Water. Water. Toilet. I heard solar panels. Some people say solar panels. No. Did you already hear something you disagree with? Solar panels. Some people say we don't need solar panels. So let's scrap it out in red. Solar panels we don't need. No. OK. Shower. We have people who would like to take a shower. Funny enough, let's not go too gender, but it's the women who wants to shower, and it's the man that I'm hearing and that says, no, we don't need that. <laughs> let's not go too much into that discussion. <laughs> Kitchen. 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 So, let's show us our list. We did have a roof, we did have a toilet, we did have baths, electricity, water. We didn't have a kitchen. Keke, how did we deal without a kitchen? We, we have uh, the That's old house and we're cooking there and we uh, go with feet to the other house and eat in yeah, the Yeah, we water. had a house in the garden, remember? So it was only 50 meters. So we cooked in the, in the old house because we preferred living in a warm, heated house without a kitchen and then only later, and, and cook in the cold house, and then come back and eat in the warm house. Yeah? That gave us the extra option, yeah? because we did it that way. Yeah? Of course, that's not scalable, that's not for a long time. It only took one month before the kitchen was installed, just before Christmas, right on time. But we lived for one month in a house without a kitchen. Shower. Internet connectivity. Now I have three kids, teenagers, insane not having internet, right? But it was impossible to get internet connection at the new house. Eh? But we still had the old house. So I took a very large UTP cable from one house to the other, drilled some holes in the old house, we didn't care, and then put it into the new house through a window. That was kind of cold, but the, ki the kids preferred it. A little bit cold from time to time when we, have, when we, can, watch, uh, when we can use the internet. Keke, television, how did we do that? Uh, we watch at... Uh Amazon Prime, and we watch YouTube. Thank you, Internet. We could watch television shows on the Internet, so we didn't need television. Although we missed some, some cable things, but OK, who cares? Shower, that's an interesting thing. Yeah? I still had a shower in the old house. So what I did up in the morning is I get up in a warm house, get dressed, go into the freezing cold in a snowy yeah, thing to a freezing cold house. It's even more freezing now because nobody's living. We don't have any electricity heaters or anything anymore, take a hot shower, because that was still working, and then get dressed again and go back to the hot house. It's totally not scalable. We did it for two months. That was about the maximum. I'm the one who took most uh, showers. I'm not sure if my 16-year-old son took a lot of showers, because he didn't like to do that. But OK, it's OK. He was uh, playing basketball and took showers there after, after uh, every practice and stuff like that. 
but it's doable. Again, not scalable, not something you want for a very long period. For two months, that was, that was possible. I preferred if it would have been in the summer, but then we made it not even needed to, to move. I have a large training room that I can use upstairs, but at this moment, in probably even the next year, I'm not even thinking about going there, so who cares that we don't have stairs to go up to the training room? It took six months to deliver that stairs, and that's fine. We didn't need it. Yeah? That's okay. It's still, the, the stairs are there. I'm still not using a training room because it's, I don't have time for that, for forgetting everything else. Solar panels, we didn't have solar panels. It's a very strange story because they were actually bought. Yeah? They were already sitting in whatever the storage uh, place of the person who needed to install, yeah? but he didn't do that, which is too bad because we used a lot of electricity that could have been free electricity because we already paid for the solar panels. I didn't like it, but at that time I had different problems to solve to make sure that we had other things there. We still don't have a garage, so that we're, the cars are still outside. The bedroom floors, the, the floors are really not really installed, so the, the nice floors that we want, but it's doable to, to walk on it. We have uh, papers on the floors to, to, to make sure that we don't damage stuff. Yeah? That means if we don't have the floors, we cannot put internal doors because they have to be put on, on top of the floors. Right? So that means right now we have curtains in front of the bedrooms. Not ideal with some teenagers, but it's doable. Right? It's not something we want for a very long time. It's something that's very high on our list to do. Bot, we don't have a bot yet. We actually, thanks to a friend on the internet, uh, bought a plastic bot, like you have a, a, a swimming pool, but now a very narrow one for a bot, so we finally can take a bot. We'll probably take a, a nicer one here in the hotel. But these are options. These are things that are actually possible to do that. The garden, well, we do have it, but there is a house there, there's a little hill with lots of other dirt in there, so we cannot use it. Yeah? It doesn't, my wife doesn't like it because, of course, we bought the original house with a very nice and large garden. But at this point, this house is like 100 times better than the old house. Just showing you that thinking in a different way helps and creates extra options at places that you would not even think about. So a lot of people, when I ask this question, when I ask this list, and this is just a limited list, if I would give you 10 minutes to think about it, a lot of people would come up with a lot more things that they actually think they need but in reality, if whatever happens, you don't need. And this is really important. Getting into a mindset or what are the options that I need, discuss what is it that I need about that. Yeah? The water we needed um, just for, for the toilet, so we needed water. That was not an option to not have it. Yeah? And going to the toilet to a freezing cold house, that was not an option for us either. So it could be for some people, but for us, we decided we'll wait till that is installed before we actually move. So this gives different things. Okay, what we would like you to do now, there's not that many people who knew XP. This is, um, this is not the picture that Ken Beck made, but this is based on his picture of the three loops. He said in XP there's multiple loops. What I would like you to do for one minute is think about all these different things that exist inside uh, ex extreme programming. If you think you don't know, you'll probably recognize some of these words there. I would like you to think if this, what is, um, what is it that you, you need for, for these things? Uh, we're not going to have a discussion because we're, we're running out of time, but the idea is let, let's take 30 seconds to think for yourself and to take that as a kind of homework to think, hey, that extreme programming, how does it give us options? Why is it that it took off? Because we had these options. You can discuss this with us. Um, later on, we're still here uh, till Friday uh, at the conference. Um, so. There's only rest is one thing to, to do, um, and let's let's talk about what did we talk about? We talked about real options, mantra, staff liquidity, and dimensional planning. Well, there's actually one other thing. Let's thank you. We didn't know who that can say. No, okay. Let's just thank you very much for for having. We actually wrote a few books. He wrote one book, I wrote a few books. And if you're um, we're, I'm, I'm in need of a few people who want to help out, we're creating, or a few years ago, we created something that's called Who is Agile in India. If you think people who should be in the book, contact me on Twitter or somewhere else. Because, uh, or if you know Sanush and Tushar, they, they were the people who were actually doing the writing and, and helping out. 
It's a very specific format. And we're working, I'm working with a lot of people on tips and tricks from the trenches. So if you have an ID for something that should be in there, you can contact me as well and I'll add it up. Thank you very much.